What up everybody? Instructive Beats back again here with our probability unit. Today we're going to be talking about the complement of an event. So let's take a chance and look at our objective today. Our objective today. Today I will be able to describe and explain how to find the complement of an event. So let's start with some math vocabulary. An event is a review from last lesson. If you remember the an event is the possible outcomes of an experiment, right? So if you're, your experiment's flipping a coin, your possible outcomes are heads or tails. The complement of an event are all the outcomes that are not the event, okay? So this is kind of confusing at first, but when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. If the event is finding the probability of heads, then the complement of that event would be all the other outcomes that are not heads, right? Which would be tails. To really dive into this, let's take a look at this conceptual example. Let's go back to the problem we talked about last lesson. You're rolling a fair dice. In last lesson, we talked about, okay, what is the probability of rolling a two, right? What is the probability of the event that the dice lands on two? So let's write that down as the event, right? So we're going to say the probability of rolling a two, and we know that to be one six because it's one out of six sides. Now, the complement would be all the other events that are not rolling a 2. So the complement of rolling a 2 would be rolling a 1, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6, right? Those are the complements to rolling a 2. So the probability of rolling a 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, or the complement of rolling a 2 would be 5, 6, okay? Again, it's a lot easier than we like to make it with all these confusing words and numbers. If you're not rolling a 2, you're either rolling a 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and you have a 5, 6 probability of that happening, right? If you roll the dice 6 times, we are predicting that you would land on a number other than 2 5 times. So the way we actually write that is, so we could say if rolling a 2 would be A, okay, the probability of A, instead of writing 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we could write it with an apostrophe. Now that's one of a couple different ways you could write it, but that's how we're going to write it. And that means, there we go, the complement of A. So if A was 1, 6, the complement would be 5, 6. Now I want to take a second to highlight these fractions right here. What do you notice about these fractions? Hopefully you notice that 1, 6 plus 5, 6 is going to give you 6, 6 or one whole, right? That leads us to our key thought. The sum of the probabilities for an event and its complement will always equal one, right? In other words, the probability of event A plus the probability of the complement of A, right? That's what that apostrophe next to it means, will always equal one. And this makes a lot of sense. If you remember right here, this number line we talked about, if you're at a one, that means you are 100% certain that that will happen. If I roll this six-sided die, I am 100% certain that it's either going to be 2 or not 2, right? I'm 100% certain of that, which means when we add those two probabilities together, it has to equal 1, okay? That's what it's saying. And again, we're trying to make it confusing with all this math lingo, but when you break it down and think about it like that, it makes a lot of sense. Let's take a look at an I do problem and how these types of questions will be asked. Our I do problem says Elijah is going to roll a fair die that is numbered 1 through 6, right? That just means all the numbers are equally represented. What is the probability he does not roll a 2, 3, 5, or 6? In other words, it's asking us what is the complement for the event that he rolls a 2, 3, 5, or 6? So if I put this event here, okay, so my event is 2, 3, 5, or 6, right? I know the complement of that event would be not those. So what numbers do we have left? So let's write down all the outcomes that we have possible, right? This is our sample space. We call that, and you have brackets here. I can't draw brackets. It always ends up looking like a butt, so I won't do it. And so if, the prob if we're asking about the event of rolling a 2, 3, 5, or 6, the complement of that event would be a 1 or a 4, right? So we are looking for what is the probability of rolling a 1 or a 4. So what we want to do here, and for this one, you could just figure out the probability of the complement, no problem, right? Because there's only six outcomes, and it's pretty easy. But typically, what you want to be able to do is find the probability of the event. So that would be 4, 6. 
And then if you know that you have to either roll the event or its complement, right? You're gonna roll the die, it's gonna land on something. What you can do then is think about this, the rule for finding the probability of the complement of an event. So we knew that we know that when we added the event plus its complement, that had to equal run one, right? Because we're certain something's gonna happen. Well, you can rewrite this using your fact family knowledge and to find the complement of event, you could take away the, you should, you can do one minus the probability of your event. So if you start with one, okay, that's gonna be equivalent to six over six, and you subtract the probability that you're gonna roll a two, three, five, or six, that means the probability that you will not roll those is two, six, or you can simplify that to one third. So the complement of event A is equal to one third, right? So here we have our we do problem. It says there are three choices of candy bar in a bag. Okay, here they are, blue, red, and orange. The probability of getting a blue bar is seven tenths. The probability of getting an orange bar is one fifth. What is the probability of getting a green bar? So I know the blue bar was seven tenths. The orange bar was one fifth. What is the probability of getting a green bar? Well, if you're randomly taking one of the candy bars out of the bag, there is a 100% chance that you are going to grab a candy bar. I want some candy. So if we start with one hole and then we take away the probability of getting the blue bar, and then we take away the probability of getting the orange bar, that's going to leave us with the green bar. In other words, this question is asking you, what is the complement for the event of getting a blue or orange bar, right? So we need to find the probability of getting a blue or orange bar and then subtract it to find the complement. If we name that event A, we can label it like that. So first of all, I want to find common denominators. So I'm going to do 10 tenths minus 7 tenths minus 2 tenths, and that's going to leave me with 1 tenth, okay? The probability of getting a green bar is 1 out of every 10, okay? Or 10%. There's a 10% chance that you will not get a blue bar or an orange bar, right? And if you don't get a blue bar or an orange bar, you're getting a green bar. Sometimes they don't u even use the words complement of an event, but that's really what you're doing, right? You're trying to add up the probabilities and then subtract it, knowing that there's a 100% certainty or a one on our number line that you will pick a candy bar. Let's try a U-try problem. So it says 12 hundredths is the probability of eating a worm in your lifetime. What is the probability that you will not eat a worm in your lifetime? Now, I just want to pause real quick to remind you that we can write, prob we typically write probabilities using ratios and we write them in fraction form. And because we write them in fraction form, you can write the ratios as a 25, or you can write the ratios as a percent or a decimal. So this is saying 12 hundredths. What it's really saying is if you live 100 lifetimes, right, in 12 of those, you would end up eating a worm. So the question says, what is the probability that you will not eat a worm? In other words, what is the complement for the event of eating a worm in your lifetime? So go ahead and pause the video, push play when you're ready to check your work, and you can check your mastery. Hopefully you just paused it and now you are checking it. So if I know the probability of eating a worm, right, is 12 hundredths, then I know that the complement of that, or in other words, not eating a worm, right? Because you're either eating a worm or you're not eating a worm. They're complementary events would be 88 hundredths. Okay. So if you live a hundred lifetimes and 88 of them, you would not eat a worm. And the way I knew that is I did one minus 12 hundredths, right? I had to borrow, go next door, get 10 more, go next door. Got to woo, drop it like it's hot. And I knew that it was 88 hundredths but I just wrote it in the ratio or as a fraction form. It's not even asking you what the complement of an event is, but that is the skill that you're using to answer these questions. And if we want to add a descriptive word to this, we could probably say, now it's not on here, we could probably say very likely because the event of not eating a worm is pretty close to one or 100%. So it's not quite certain because it's not all the way to 100%, but it's more than likely. So I would even use the word 
very likely to des describe the chances that you don't eat a worm. Thank you so much uh, for checking out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online for you to learn from. We love that you chose us. Please like and leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love for you to follow us on all the social media sites. And please, please, please hit that red button and subscribe. We'd love to have you join the Instructor Beats family. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.